Hello, Podium users, and welcome back. Uh, so this is probably going to end up being a two-part tutorial, and I want to start talking about a couple slightly more advanced post-processing techniques. And specifically, we're going to talk about how to use SU Podium to generate a Z-depth pass, which can then be used in Photoshop to generate a lens blur effect uh, to simulate photographic depth of field, just like on this image currently on screen. All right, so this is actually a three-part process, and that's why I think the videos are going to end up being split. Um, but essentially, we're first going to learn how to tell Podium to save a Z-depth pass in addition to the raw render that we're accustomed to seeing. So what we'll do is modify one of the preset files so that it saves the final image, like this one on screen, and also saves a Z-depth pass, which is what you see now. And all this is, is a, it's a gradient from white to black uh, showing distance from the camera so at the camera position the image is white and then as you get further from the camera the image fades to black and what this is used for is controlling where the image is blurred in the final composite with depth of field right so those parts of the z-depth pass that were white in the foreground are going to remain sharp in the finished image whereas these areas toward the back that are black end up blurry after we apply the depth of field effect. Um, so after we learn how to generate the z-depth pass, we're going to talk about how to tone map it for best results, and then I'm also going to cover how to use the Photoshop's lens blur to create that final depth of field look. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, here we go. So I've opened up this simple test scene in SketchUp, and this is what we're going to use to demonstrate the depth of field effect. So the first thing we need to do is modify one of our Podium presets and tell it to save a Z-depth pass in addition to the final image. And the one I'm going to be working on is the exterior default, just because it renders pretty fast and it'll look nice for this exterior scene. So there's actually two ways to modify a Podium preset. Uh, we could either come to Extensions, SU Podium, Tools, Preset Editor, and then just load the one that we want to that we want to modify. Or because these are just saved as plain text files somewhere on your computer, uh, they can be opened in any text editor. So on Windows, that would be Notepad. On Mac, uh, I think it's called Text Edit. And so you just need to know where the preset files are stored. So if I flip over to Photoshop. Um, you can see the file path is pretty different based on your operating system, but as long as you can find those presets, you can then open them in a text editor and make any changes that you want. So I like to, I like to use Notepad++, which is just a slightly more robust version of Notepad. And if I open that, you can see it's just a list of parameters that we've pre-configured. And what we'll do is add two lines to this preset. Uh, to tell Podium that it needs to render a depth pass. Okay, but before we do that, I, I want to drive home the point that you should never directly modify the original Podium preset, because you always want to have the original copy of that preset file just in case you make changes that, that screw things up. So I'm going to close that, go back to my presets folder, which one more time is under Program Data, SketchUp, SketchUp 2018, uh, SketchUp, Plugins, Podium, Podium, Presets, okay? So instead of opening this exterior default preset directly, what I'm going to do is copy and paste it just to duplicate, and then I'm going to rename this exterior default underscore z-depth. And I'm going to change the prefix to a four, so that when I when I open this in the in the preset drop down inside Podium, it's going to be right at the bottom of the list. Oops, I don't need that copy in there. Okay, so I've duplicated and renamed the exterior default preset, and now I'm going to edit that. I'm just going to zoom in so we can see a little bit better. And I know this looks uh, complicated, but the only changes we're going to make to this document are to type two very simple lines right at the top. So I'm just going to hit enter a couple times after here to give us some space and flip back over to Photoshop to show you the line and sort of explain what we're doing. Okay, so these are the two script lines that we're going to add to that file. 
And I, I'll put these on the web page so that you can just copy and paste, but I do want to explain what exactly is happening. Right, so the first line is telling Podium what needs to be saved. Each of these codes, 0x1, 0x2, 0x8, are individual render channels, um, which are also sometimes called buffers, hence the line. Need buffers 0, 0x1, 0x2, 0x8. And we're telling Podium, I want 0x1, which is the final composite image, 0x2, which is the alpha channel, and 0x8, which is the z-depth pass. And that's really the focus of this tutorial, is that 0x8. Now, Podium actually does have several additional render channels that could be saved with the image. So by adding extra codes to the end of this line, we would save even more individual render channels out. I don't want to move away from the original focus of this tutorial too much, but I will put this list on the website, and this just shows all the additional need buffers that you could add to a Podium preset. So if you just wanted direct lighting, or you just wanted an image that showed indirect lighting, or 0x4, for example, is pretty similar to a SketchUp screen capture. It just shows all the textures, but they're flat with no lighting information. Um, but I'm going to go back. Uh, maybe we'll cover this in a future video, but for now, I want to stick to the Z-Depth tutorial. Okay, so I'm going to grab this line, Control-C, flip back over to the preset file, paste it in, and now when I save this, if I go back over to SketchUp and open my Podium Options menu, it should be there right at the bottom of the list. Exterior Default Z-Depth. And now if I select this preset, move into the render camera, and then do a quick test render, uh, I'll show you the three images that we get. So I'm just going to click the render button, uh, wait for the render to finish, and then I'll show you the results. Great, so that finished, and you can see if I click show, we've got a regular Podium render just like we always would. But if I flip over to the folder where that was saved, there's actually three image files that were outputted, and those are those three codes that we added to the preset line. So we've got the final composite image, the alpha channel, and then this is the z-depth pass, which unfortunately doesn't look the way it's supposed to. It's just a, a pure white image, right? And so this, the reason I did this was to demonstrate why we need the second line that we're gonna add to the preset, and that's the z-tone mapper line. So if we don't tell Podium how to render that gradient from white to black, we're just gonna get an unusable white image. So let's go back to that preset file, right? We're gonna add the second script line, Z tone mapper, linear, and then I'm gonna explain what these values are for, right? So once again, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this line, control C, back to the preset, give it a, its own line, paste it in and save it. So now we've got the correct need buffers and the correct tone mapping for our Z depth pass. And finally, when we render, we're gonna get something that looks like this. Um, but I wanna, I wanna circle back around and talk about what those four values mean. Okay, so Z tone mapper, linear, five, 15, one, zero. Um, let's examine what exactly this line means and, and what we're telling Podium when we add this to the preset. So if I flip over, um, I've just so sort of got the different values defined and a short explanation of what each one is. So linear, there's three different types of interpolation possible from black to white, linear, logarithmic, and inverse. Um, I can't really speak intelligently about the differences between the three, so I've always just left it at linear. That's something you're free to explore on your own, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're just gonna leave that line as it is and focus on the next four values. So white clip is the first, the first number, which in this case is five. So the white clip is the distance from the camera where that Z depth pass is gonna be white. That means five meters from the camera is this seating arrangement basically. And as you can see in the final image, it's showing up white because that's how we've told Podium to, um, to tone map that image. The black clip, same thing, it's just the distance from the camera where the image is black. So in this case, 15 meters. I wanna talk about scene scale real quick. So 
when I was initially experimenting with this, I assumed that Podium would have a way of recognizing the the units that your SketchUp model is using, which is why I put 50 feet on the far wall, because I knew that wall was going to be about 50 feet from the camera. However, my first tests um, using the Z Tone Mapper line didn't turn out as expected, and that's because Podium only recognizes meters in that script file, right? So these values, 5 and 15, need to be in meters, not in feet, or whatever units that your SketchUp scene is, is using. Uh, those values must be in meters for the image to be properly tone mapped. Then white value and black value is just the intensity of the white and the intensity of the black. One is pure white, zero is pure black. So this scene is going from pure white up here in the foreground to pure black in the background. If I change those values from, from one to maybe 0 0.7 and from zero to like 0 0.2 or something like that, we would get uh, more of a gradual fall off in these middle value ranges. I'm not honestly sure how that would affect the depth of field in your scene. I haven't experimented with it. So I just left them at one and zero, uh, but that's something you're, you're definitely free to play around with. Okay, so we're getting pretty close to the end of this first section here. That's actually all the key information that we need, but just in case that Z tone mapper uh, information wasn't completely clear, I want to show this second graphic that just sort of illustrates the concept um, of the white clip and the black clip, right? So just to review in terms of that actual SketchUp scene, we've got our approximate camera position, which is right here, just toward the entryway of this courtyard type thing. The white clip is five meters in front of the camera, and that means at this value, at this clipping plane, everything in that Z depth pass is going to be white. And actually, everything between the white clipping plane and the camera would also be white. So um, you need to be careful about where you set this value, because if you set it too, too close to the camera, then by the time you get to the section of your image that you want to be in focus, we're actually not going to have white. We're going to have middle gray values, right? So if I set the, if I set the white clipping plane at 0, this wine bottle would then be sort of a neutral gray instead of a pure white. And we don't want it to be blurred at all in the image. We want it to be completely sharp. So be careful about where you set that white clip, right? And then the depth gradient is just going to fall off linearly from white to black at the black clipping plane. And in this case, the black clip is 15 meters in front of the camera, right at the edge of this courtyard type, type setup in the model. And as we can see, in the finished Z-depth pass, we have white in the foreground, black in the background. And that's the gist of it. So that's actually going to conclude this portion of the tutorial. So hopefully you've got those two script lines copied into your preset, and you've maybe created a couple test renders. Um, and then in the next portion of this video, we're actually going to go ahead and learn how to use that Z-Depth Pass to create this depth of field effect. So thank you guys for listening and following along, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot.